welcome to the lecture on weldability of non ferrous materials. So, we discussed about uh, the ferrous materials among them uh, especially we discussed about the steel and then we discussed about the cast iron and then we also must uh, have some knowledge about the weldability behavior of the non ferrous materials also because non ferrous materials uh, are also of quite a good significance and uh, they have quite a good unique properties as even as compared to the ferrous materials especially about uh, the machinability studies then first of all castability studies because here you require um, the melting at uh, smaller temperatures. Then they have some special uh, properties like uh, many a times uh, they are used uh, when you need a very high conductivity and then if you look at the strength to weight ratio that is the biggest advantage as compared to the you know, ferrous uh, components because the strength to weight ratio for many non-ferrous materials are quite uh, better as compared to the ferrous counterparts. So, you know, we must also have certain ideas about the weldability aspects of non-ferrous materials especially to know that what are the challenges when we do welding, what are uh, those points we need to uh, concentrate uh, to understand that uh, uh, how the weldability will change. So, that is what uh, we are going to discuss today in the weldability of non-ferrous materials. So, uh, uh, among the non-ferrous materials we will first uh, try to concentrate on the material that is aluminum and its alloys. Now, aluminum uh, alloys have certain characteristics uh, which makes it a very uh, important material and uh, as we know that it is a very uh, silvery white metal and uh, it has certain properties like uh, it is light. So, aluminum if you look at it has uh, it is uh, as third uh, you know uh, weight having weight uh, as that of the steel. So, its density is about one third of that of the uh, steel and uh, uh, very so then it is quite ductile uh, non magnetic uh, then uh, its conductivity is uh, quite high even it is having better conductivity uh, conductivity than the copper also. Then uh, <coughs> aluminum has uh, the tendency to form the high strength alloys with other metals. Now, if you take the pure aluminum then pure aluminum is uh, soft and it, it does not have much of the strength. So, for engineering applications pure aluminum has not much of the use. Pure aluminum has its use wherever we require quite a good uh, thermal conductivity. So, in that case we go for the aluminum, but if we try to have uh, try to know about the strength of these alloys then uh, uh, so uh, it has the tendency that it makes the alloy with the different materials and uh, yields into a very good properties. Then uh, the uh, fusion range is about 520 to 650 degree centigrade. So, as we know that aluminum has also smaller uh, melting point. So, in that case uh, uh, that uh, gives you another uh, advantage because you have uh, uh, to you know do you have the advantage in welding because the temperature requirement is quite smaller. So, fusion range is something like 520 to 650 degree centigrade. It is uh, highly resistant to corrosion and uh, uh, the thing is that because of its attractive uh, combination of uh, physical, mechanical and chemical properties, uh, its uses are many. Uh, you have uh, the use of aluminum alloys in many fields. Before that uh, they also exhibit uh, quite a good amount of toughness. So, uh, you know they become stronger at temperatures uh, below the ordinary atmospheric uh, you know range. So, that is uh, these are the uh, normal uh, traits of the aluminum material. Now, if you talk about uh, the uses of these uh, uh, aluminum alloys, now its uses are many. Uh, 
and uh, they are normally used uh, if you talk about the alloys because uh, the advantage is that it gives you quite a good specific uh, strength value. So, they are used in uh, those uh, industries where we need the uh, strength but at uh, the lower weight. So, in that case it becomes a cheaper alternative. The same strength if you get uh, with larger weight then in that case uh, you have to pay more. So, we are using in the transportation industries because in the transportation industries we, uh, we think of having a material which should be lighter so that you have energy efficient uh, vehicles. Then also you go for using the structural framework, then engine parts and uh, uh, decorative features. Every, every, in the every areas we uh, try to use this aluminum uh, components. Then uh, in the food industry also aluminum has extensive application uh, like in refrigeration or storage containers, they are also made by this uh, aluminum. Uh, then you have also the use of aluminum in the cryogenic uh, you know applications uh, also. Uh, so, this way uh, the aluminum is uh, very much a sought after material and uh, it is uh, gaining the momentum in, in terms of its demand. Now, as the demand of these components in are increasing similar will be the trend for their uh, you know uh, these aspects like how to weld them how to get a satisfactory weld in these cases. So, these properties also pose in one way or other the challenges may be many times or favorable uh, you know favorable also there may be uh, as regards the welding uh, aspect is considered. So, we are going to discuss something about the welding characteristics of aluminum and it is alloys. Now, if you talk about the aluminum the the important thing in the case of aluminum is that uh, you have the thin oxide film which is present on the surface. As we know that in aluminum uh, you have these oxide of aluminum Al2O3 on the surface and uh, uh, this is removed chemically or mechanically before welding you have to uh, remove them and, uh, and the, this oxide film basically rapidly forms during the uh, welding also. So, basically uh, you have uh, to have certain ways by which you can remove these uh, uh, you know oxide layers and for that uh, you may have uh, uh, the use of a suitable flux in the case of uh, welding and brazing and also when we do I mean uh, the arc welding in that case uh, you have to use the suitably the uh, stick electrodes or thickly coated electrodes in the metallic arc welding. Also when we go for the use of the DC welding or AC welding in those case we are uh, using this DC RP to be uh, very effective for the MIG welding uh, and AC is used for the TIG welding. So, basically what happens that in, in AC the, in the half the cycle that process is done and in half of the cycle it is not. So, uh, the in the wig, MIG welding when we use this uh, DCRP then uh, the oxide is removed by the arc cleaning uh, action. So, because the aluminum base metal will be the negative pole. So, when we use the uh, DCRP so that is reverse polarity. So, electrode will be positive and work will be negative and in that case the there will be uh, arc uh, you know uh, cleaning action. Now, if the DC arc is uh, used in the TIG welding then so in that case the TIG ele uh, electrodes will be overheated. So, uh, and uh, the problem may be that when the TIG electrodes will be overheated uh, then uh, uh, the chances of uh, melting or, or the you know problem will be there in the uh, adequate uh, melting. So, uh, what we do is in the case of uh, you know uh, TIG welding we go for the AC uh, you know setup. Uh, so, in, in case of uh, MIG welding we go for the DC reverse polarity because there itself there the, the electrode itself has to deposit. So, that is um, getting accumulated that is uh, getting large portion of heat because this is uh, reverse polarity. So, uh, so electrode will be positive 
and in the case of uh, TIG you go for the uh, AC welding. Now uh, the thin film may contain moisture and may react during fusion welding and liberate hydrogen to form the porosity. This is another uh, challenge because the thin film of oxide which is there, uh, so it may have moisture and then it may react uh, during the fusion welding and liberate hydrogen to form the porosity. So, this challenge is further uh, to be overcome uh, in the case of welding. The another uh, property of uh, the aluminum is that as we have understood that it is a very good conductor of heat. So, being a very good conductor of heat, the heat will be dissipated very, very fast and that is, is a basically a big challenge uh, when we do the welding. So, for that there are certain you know measures which are to be uh, taken. So, that means uh, the thing is that when you are uh, giving the heat input in that case being very very high conductor it will quickly go away and it will be passing. So, that way uh, you will not have adequate uh, heat there uh, retaining there so that you can do the fusion operation. So, for that you have to have the proper uh, you know uh, way to compensate that heat loss uh, to the surroundings. Now, for that uh, when we do the gas welding in that case you can have the nozzle of larger diameter. So, that uh, will give you the large amount of uh, heat in that case. Similarly, when you go for uh, uh, the use of current then the current value should be uh, somewhat larger uh, than the normal arc welding processes. So, wherever we are doing the arc welding uh, as compared to that you will have to go for little bit uh, larger value of the current. Then uh, uh, we can also do like when we have thicker work pieces then we can preheat that and then you do it so that the, the, the rate of heat transfer uh, in a particular time will be uh, smaller. So, these are the precautions which uh, you will have to take uh, for uh, uh, taking care of these properties. Another uh, challenge with aluminum is that you have uh, it has a very high uh, coefficient of linear expansion. So, once you have the high coefficient of linear expansion then the chances of distortion and buckling will be higher because as the temperature increases the expansion will be the chances of expansion will be more. So, if you are not uh, taking proper care, so in that case you will have the chances of uh, uh, buckling uh, or distortion will be there more. Uh, then uh, aluminum also is prone to cracking because of its low strength at the uh, solidus and uh, especially the heat treatable alloys. So, aluminum as we know that it makes alloys with large amount of material and, and some of them are the heat treatable materials and some of them are not heat treatable. So, the alloys which are heat treatable they show the larger tendency to crack. So, so whenever you have the tendency to crack in that case you will have to go do the suitable pre or post weld heat treatment so that the chances of cracking will be smaller. Uh, the another challenge uh, which uh, we face with aluminum is that in the case of uh, uh, ferrous component uh, we know that what is the temperature what might be the temperature when the melting is going on. But in this case it does not show any change in the color. So, that is the challenge. So, you will have to by experience only people can know that where is the what is the stage of welding whether welding is going on or it has been finished or the temperature. So, basically there are uh, only certain indications when you have the melting of the flux or the blistering of metal surfaces. By only that uh, the experienced uh, you know persons who are working uh, on welding. So, they can only uh, get to know that uh, uh, what is the state of uh, uh, the welding process whether welding process has been over or it is still going on. Uh, the process which are uh, used for the uh, welding aluminum and its alloys are like oxy gas welding, then you have metallic arc welding, resistance welding, carbon arc welding, 
brazing, solid state welding, MIG welding, TIG welding, atomic hydrogen welding. So, these are normally the methods which are used for welding of the uh, aluminum and its alloys. Then the next material which we are going to discuss will be the copper and its alloys. So, copper is again one of the very important uh, non-ferrous material which has extensive use and because of uh, because it has uh, a very good properties. Uh, so, we will discuss first of all its properties and then the challenges uh, related to the welding behavior of this material. So, copper uh, alloys uh, now they have uh, uh, very good corrosion resistance, electrical and thermal, thermal conductivity and formability. So, uh, good corrosion resistance as we know that it has very good electrical and thermal conductivity. So, the, for that it is used in the electrical appliances, uh, thermal conductivity is quite good. So, many a times we use it uh, for uh, making even molds in certain very, uh, very rapidly cooling or chilling. Uh, you know casting processes so like continuous casting or so. So, it has a very good uh, electrical and thermal conductivity and also the formability. Now, high strength and corrosion resistance uh, makes it very suitable for use in the marine applications. So, that is required when we go for components uh, to be used in the marine applications. Because of good wear resistance, high hardness and corrosion resistance, it is also used for the surfacing of metals many a times. And uh, as far as its weldability is concerned, it can be soldered, brazed and uh, welded. So, this way uh, copper as we see that it has uh, a very good uh, you know combination of properties. Uh, you, as, as, as regards uh, its use in the engineering uh, you know uh, applications are concerned. Apart from that it has a very good resistance to fatigue and abrasion. So, that is another uh, thing. Then uh, also it can be used because uh, uh, it gives a very good uh, appearance. Uh, uh, so, pleasing appearance once polished. So, also used for uh, uh, that uh, decorative purposes or uh, other purposes. Uh, very good it has the machinability. Uh, we know that its melting point is little bit higher among the non-ferrous materials, but it is quite uh, smaller as compared to steel. So, the um, melting point is uh, pure copper is close to 1083 degree centigrade. So, it is quite uh, smaller and uh, somewhat even smaller than the uh, grey cast iron or so. So, uh, this makes copper a very, very uh, suitable material. Apart from that copper has the, uh, the advantage uh, with copper is that it can alloy with different types of uh, uh, you know elements uh, and its alloys are mostly used uh, like you have the uh, brass is there, high copper you have uh, many high copper alloys are there, brass is there or bronze. So, that way you have many uh, materials uh, as alloys which are very, very popular uh, which are the copper based alloys. Coming to the talking about the welding characteristics of copper and its alloys. So, uh, now the again the challenge with uh, copper is that since its thermal conductivity is uh, quite high. So, you need uh, very high heat input into the parent metal uh, and for that even the preheating is required because the thermal conductivity being very, very high the rate of heat transfer also the rate of uh, heat being extracted will be quite fast. So, that way you will have to go for the preheating of the parts uh, in those cases. Also uh, just like aluminum uh, faces it has also very high uh, thermal expansion coefficient. So, uh, uh, that if the thermal expansion coefficient is larger in that case uh, uh, that may induce the residual stresses certainly because uh, once you have the uh, more expansion and then if you have the restraint then residual stresses will develop. And uh, so, and, and that we also, also should have the aim that this value of the residual stresses should not be 
more than certain limit. So we, uh, so we advise, the advice is that you should, we should go for the slow welding speed or the, or when we are welding, in that case uh, uh, while uh, cooling, we should cover the welding joint with insulating material like asbestos. So that is what uh, we do in the case of uh, the copper. Also another uh, challenge which uh, or another problem which we get with uh, the copper is that it has a high tendency to absorb oxygen. Now uh, this uh, oxygen, uh, so, so that way you will have the oxidation problem and uh, it has to be avoided. So to avoid this oxidation problem, suitable flux or inert gas is necessary. So uh, this, uh, for uh, avoiding this problem, uh, what we do is uh, we can use the suitable flux or even the inert gases. So uh, that's what uh, we do to see that they do not observe the oxygen uh, in the case of the welding of copper. Now uh, another thing which we uh, see with the uh, copper, the challenge is that it uh, remains uh, in the fluid state for larger time. Now uh, it is, I mean in, in other words, it is considerably more fluid than other metals and uh, that is why uh, uh, you need to have uh, the uh, greater welding speeds for the copper. So otherwise that uh, creates uh, a problem as compared to that of that for the steel. And also uh, what we do is uh, we also do some uh, you know backup plate or uh, uh, we use uh, some, some stripper plates or so while doing the welding uh, for the copper. The different processes which are used uh, for copper is the TIG, uh, MIG, gas welding, brazing and soldering. So uh, you have the different uh, welding parameters will be there in the case of TIG or uh, MIG or so. Uh, also the uh, when we uh, do this uh, um, TIG welding then you have some advantages uh, what we get. Uh, uh, otherwise, like uh, uh, when we uh, do the arc welding uh, with TIG, then uh, we are basically uh, deoxidized coppers are obtained uh, in that case. You can uh, use uh, other welding processes also like MIG or gas, but then brazing and soldering is uh, another, uh, uh, these are the two most commonly used methods which are used uh, for these. Uh, joining of these uh, copper parts and uh, they give uh, some because in brazing uh, you have the temperature of uh, you, the brazed metal will be close to 450 uh, I mean more than that so 600 or 700 or so. So in that case it uh, gives a very good substitute of welding the copper based materials which gives quite a good strength. Now we will uh, move to uh, the another uh, variety of uh, material and that is magnesium and its alloys. Now magnesium uh, as a, uh, you know in the recent times magnesium is uh, going to be a very lucrative material as far as the uh, you know its properties are concerned. If you look at its property you see that it has a very high strength to weight ratio. So it, it, it has it gives you a very very high strength to weight ratio, its density is quite smaller, uh, even lighter than aluminum and, and the specific strength becomes quite high. The, there is a good fatigue strength uh, with the magnesium alloys, you have good dimensional stability in the surface, good damping capacity, high thermal conductivity, uh, good electrical conductivity and uh, you have, uh, uh, so these are basically the different uh, properties which you have with uh, magnesium alloys. Now uh, depending upon its properties, it has uh, uh, the use in many sectors and uh, mostly we are going to make the airframes in aircraft uh, industries magnesium has a very good use because its alloys has a very good use because of very lightweight uh, uh, of magnesium. 
then you have uh, in the engines gearboxes or you know uh, there are many places where you use then uh, in the transmission pumps or differentials all these places also they, they are used they are also used in the material handling equipments uh, also in the you know moving parts of the textile machines and printing equipment. So, there are uh, enough use of this component. Now, talking about the weldability behavior or welding characteristics of the magnesium alloys. Now, most of the magnesium alloys are readily weldable. So, they have good uh, weldability uh, properties, but then uh, uh, you know you have uh, many challenges and you have some parameters which affect uh, it is uh, welding characteristics and uh, the important ones are like one is oxidation. So, uh, oxidation is uh, the problem because magnesium all itself is very much prone to uh, you know uh, I, mean, I mean it has a quite good affinity towards uh, oxygen. So, you will have to do the welding in such an environment that it does not have the contact with oxygen. So, this is uh, to be seen. Then um, uh, it has a very high thermal conductivity and the thermal expansion. So, again because of that uh, the, the similar uh, problems are with even the materials like aluminum or copper. So, you will have to have the preheat and post heat uh, post well heat treatment uh, to be provided or you will have to have the, the cooling in a controlled atmosphere. So, that uh, the adverse effect of this thermal expansion is uh, not uh, with not you know faced. Then uh, susceptibility to hot cracking that is hot shortness. So, this is uh, another problem in the case of uh, the magnesium grain growth and aging. So, uh, what happens that uh, when the alloy is welded in the uh, work hardened condition in that case the grain growth and aging occurs in the heat affected zone and 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 if that happens then that uh, imparts uh, not a favorable you know situation that does not lead to a favorable situation for the material because grain growth being taken place uh, that will be uh, making the properties inferior so basically what we do is that uh, many a times uh, uh, for even uh, removing this uh, for uh, uh, lowering these chances of oxidation we use suitable fluxes. Then uh, for uh, uh, you know uh, if there is uh, grain growth or aging in that case you will have to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, you have to see that uh, uh, they should not occur. Uh, that, that happens mainly because of the temperature. So, uh, otherwise uh, uh, they will be uh, lowering the overall strength of the weld pool. Stress corrosion uh, cracking is uh, the another uh, you know phenomena which uh, is seen in the case of uh, magnesium alloys and that is typically uh, more prominent when the uh, they are making the alloys with aluminum and aluminum is more than 1.5 percent. So, that is also uh, important uh, in, in those cases. Uh, surface preparation or cleaning is important because uh, many a times uh, the, these uh, magnesium surfaces are painted. Uh, so, that is why when you do the welding this aspect is to be kept in mind that the surface must be prepared they must be cleaned properly. The different uh, processes which are used for magnesium alloys are TIG, MIG that is uh, tungsten inert gas, metal inert gas, resistance welding, gas welding, brazing, pressure and force welding or EBW electron beam welding. These are the different uh, processes which are used for the uh, magnesium alloys uh, welding. Certainly, every welding will have uh, you will have the optimized set of parameters which will give you more satisfactory weldings, but the aspects which are to be looked into are basically related to the higher thermal conductivity and then oxidation and then grain growth, aging and all that that is to be uh, you know incorporated that is to be looked after. Thank you very much.